When it comes to cradling technique, there's two types of cradles that we need to think about as beginners. One is the two-handed cradle, and two is the one-handed cradle. Whichever cradle you're thinking about working on, one thing is consistent with both. We need to make sure that we have the stick loose and relaxed and in our fingertips. When we have the stick in our fingertips, it allows that stick to move more freely, it allows us to have more control, and it allows us to be loose and relaxed. I like to think of our two-handed cradle as a bicep curl, allowing the stick to be relaxed in my fingertips and curling the stick from my fingers to my palms to curling my bicep. This allows the stick to come all the way up and all the way down, and I can really work on feeling that stick in my fingertips as I work on my cradle. Notice as I curl over my wrist and my fingers, it allows me to possess and control that ball, and I'm doing it in a nice relaxed motion. When we're first starting out, we need to feel how we can get this motion going so that we can retain possession while moving at faster speeds. I would suggest our beginner players try two types of cradles with both hands. One, trying more in the fingertips and the hands, and then two, incorporating that bicep curl so you can really get the feel for a harder two-handed cradle and get a feel for that smaller cradles and possessing that ball. One of the reasons this two-handed cradle is so important is because we need to think about how we run without a stick in our hands. We tend to run by pumping our arms by our sides and by allowing us to get into that two-handed cradle, it really allows us to start to run at faster speed. For beginner players, if we're not cradling properly, it can really slow ourselves down and we don't allow ourselves to get into that full speed running motion. One thing to keep in mind when working on your two-handed cradle is to make sure that bottom hand is nice and relaxed and is not dictating the movement of the stick. You want to be using your top hand to drive and curl and let that bottom hand be really loose and stay more by your side so that you can really feel the impact that the top hand makes on the cradle. Now as we move on to our one-handed cradle, this is something that you see a lot of players doing. When we're in a one-handed cradling position, the stick is more vertical and parallel to your body. It's important, again, like we mentioned earlier, to keep that stick in your fingertips during that one-handed cradle. This allows us to curl the stick back and forth and maintain possession in the pocket. You commonly see a lot of attackmen using a one-handed cradle to protect that bottom hand from defenders. We can do this as midfielders as well, and even long poles at the highest levels of the game. When working on our one-handed cradle technique, we wanna make sure our free arm is upright with either our fist up or our arm up to protect against defensive checks. One thing that I think is important to take note of when working on our one-handed cradle is thinking about how our shoulders and body can also help us protect our stick. When we get comfortable with that stick in one hand and really working in our fingertips, we also want to be mindful of using our shoulders to protect that stick. If we let that stick get too far away from our body, we start to expose it. So if we can keep it tight to our body in that vertical position and then learn how to move our shoulders, we can really do a nice job protecting from defensive checks. For our beginner players and parents who are just learning the rules, one thing that's really important to remember is that the free arm cannot be used to push off or push away a check. It can be out and exposed to prevent against a check, but as soon as we start to push off or push away, we're gonna get called for a violation called a ward.